This is an example problem showing how to find interference fringes with uh, two glass plates that are separated by a thread, making an air wedge between them. Okay, in particular, in this problem, we have two glass plates, 10 centimeters long, in contact with each other at one end uh, here and they're separated at the other end here by a thread with a diameter of 0.5 millimeters. Light containing wavelengths of 400 nanometers and 600 nanometers is incident from above uh, and viewed by reflection. So the question is at what distance from the contact point uh, here uh, will be the next dark fringe. And the reason it says next dark fringe is the first dark fringe is right there at the contact point. So we're looking for the dark fringe other than the one right there at the contact point. Okay, so uh, we have these two glass plates. And if light is coming in from above, then some of the light will be reflected here off of the boundary between the first glass plate and the air wedge. That is what I've drawn here as ray number one. Other light will be transmitted through that first boundary, but bounce off the second boundary between the air wedge and the second glass plate. I've marked that as ray number two. Now, you may be wondering, why do we not have uh, why do we not have to worry about light that's bouncing off of the top of the first glass plate? And that's because this glass plate right here uh, is very thick compared to the wavelength of light. You, even if that, if that uh, glass plate was only one millimeter thick, it's still many, many times uh, thicker than the wavelength of light, and therefore we're generally not going to get interference from it. Whereas this wedge has a thickness that is the same order of magnitude as the wavelength of light, and that's why we're going to get uh, interference from it. Okay, so what we need is to find the place where there is destructive interference for both 400 nanometer light and 600 nanometer light. Uh, now, if we don't worry about any phase changes that occur upon reflection, we would have an equation for destructive interference here. Uh, because the path length difference from ray 1 to ray 2 is 2 times the index of refraction of air times the thickness of the air wedge. Okay, and what we need is this path length difference to be equal to a half integer multiple of wavelength. So we have m plus one half times lambda the wavelength, where m is some integer. Okay, but when light reflects off of a material that has an index of refraction that's greater than the material that the light uh, was in before it reflected, and as in this case where it goes from air and reflects off of glass, then there's going to be a 180 degree phase change. So ray number two already has a 180 degree phase change. That's a half a wavelength phase change. That means that I actually don't need this one half right here because the one half is taken into account by the 180 degree phase change. So with the phase change, at the bottom glass plate, the condition for destructive interference is going to be 2 times the index of refraction of air times the thickness of the air wedge equals an integer number of wavelengths. Okay. Now, since the index of refraction of air is equal to 1, then this n right here becomes 1. We can divide both sides by 2, 
and then we get the thickness of the air wedge for destructive interference is going to equal m lambda over 2. Now, we want destructive interference for both 400 nanometer light and 600 nanometer light in the same place. Uh, so that means we need to find a thickness for which both of those, the 400 and the 600, are going to uh, have destructive interference at the same time. So for the 400 nanometer light, uh, for M equals 1, we have T equals 400 lambda or no, lambda, 400 is lambda, excuse me. So we have 400 times 1 for m over 2. That would be for m equals 1. Okay. For m equals 1, 600 nanometer light, we have uh, T1 equals 600 over 2. For m equals 2, 400 nanometer light, we have 400 times 2 over 2. For m equals 2, for 600, we have 600 times 2 over 2. For T3, for 400 nanometer light, we have 400 times 3 over 2, okay. but notice 400 times 3 is 1,200, and 600 times 2 is 1,200. So it appears that for the thickness T equals 400 times 3 over 2, which also is 600 times 2 over 2, we will have a dark interference fringe, or a minimum destructive interference for both of those two wavelengths at the same time. So the thickness of the air wedge where we will have a dark fringe for the 400 and the 600 at the same time, since those two twos cancel, is 600 nanometers. Now that's not quite the answer, because if we go back to the original problem statement, if you go back to the original problem statement, it asks for the distance from the contact point. So what we've found is the thickness T right here. But what's being asked for is this distance. We'll call it X. Okay. The distance away from the contact point. So what we can do is use similar triangles. Right? We're told in the problem that the distance from here all the way over to here is 10 centimeters. And the distance from here to here, the thickness of that thread, is 0.5 millimeters. So what we can do is write a ratio of similar triangles. So we have then uh, 600 nanometers over X is a 0.5 millimeters over 10 centimeters. 
So we can solve for x. x is going to be 600 nanometers times 10 centimeters all over 0.5 millimeters. So we're going to have to convert all of those things to the same units. But when you do that, so let's see, that will be uh, 6 times 10 to the minus 7 meters times 0 0.1 meters all over 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. And so that gives us an x of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. or 1.2 centimeters. Uh, if you wanted to find the location of bright fringes, then uh, we would use the equation uh, 2nt equals m plus 1 half uh, lambda. Also notice that we didn't need the index of refraction of the glass here it, because the, the interference is occurring because of the air wedge. So you only need the index of refraction of air. You don't need the index of refraction of glass in this particular problem.